earlier. Yeah. Hmm. All right. So tonight we started the other half of the reviews. Um, I just watched a movie I had never watched, which Yvonne is a surprise that I haven't watched. Yeah. As I am that she hasn't watched really good Nightmare on Elm Street movies. <laughs> so I watched Inkheart tonight. What did you think of Inkheart? I love this movie. That's why I wanted you to watch it. Um, it's interesting because for me again, so you have Gollum from Lord of the Rings. Yes. Then you have Jill Valentine from Resident Evil. She was the brunette in, in Apocalypse, the one with the, the nemesis creature okay. that Alice has to punch and kick and fight with. All right. And it turns out to be her friend as a mutant. Okay. Remember? Not really. Anyways, Jill was the one with the crop top and the short miniskirt, the black miniskirt, the cop, who's not dressed like a cop. Okay. Yeah. So that's who his wife is in this movie. Oh, all right. Um, I, I, I enjoyed the movie. Uh, I thought there was stuff they, mm. they could have done with it they didn't do with it. But they were following a book. I, I know, it's just... It's a story. But it, it feels sort of like it could have gone more into the, the mystical land part of it than it did. But that's because it's only the movie of the first book. There's two more books that they didn't make into movies. I'm just saying and that... And they do that in the in the second two books... They go way more into that. I'm just saying to me, it sort of feels like um, through the looking glass without going through the looking glass. It was. It's what it is in the first book. You're only getting it because you're only getting parts of that story. You're not going into the story. It's like, hey, here's a really interesting Wait. fantasy land, and we're not going to show it to you. Because it's only the first book. Brendan Fraser. You might need to read this, the books then. Brendan Fraser is always Brendan Fraser. He can't act as anything other than Brendan know, Fraser. But he's in some cool movies. He's also in The Mummy. I didn't wasn't including that as one of the cool movies. Yeah, but that was. But what's... he is in movies, some movies that I like. Like this being one of them. I I mean I like him in Blast from the Past. But that might be an Alicia Silverstone crush that's talking as much as anything else. And I liked him in Encino Man and uh, I really hated The Mummy and you've never seen Furry Vengeance where he's fighting with animals from the woods that sounds stupid because he's, he's with this contractor they're going to knock down the woods to build this really expensive okay. housing development and they're going to misplace all these animals and move them to another location. Right. And I remember watching it and thinking, um, they would, they, they don't, they just kill them. They don't care. In real life, they don't care. They don't transplant animals because they're taking away their habitat. They just knock down the habitat. Animals are on their own. But the, I thought it was good. I, I, and and I thought there was so much more that could have been done with the daughter, though. Again, it's only the first book. Because she. She she's in when she's in the library and she starts reading and stuff's happening. I'm like, you know what this this could be really cool. And then it's just over and it's like, oh okay, all right. I don't know. I it's I just, only the first book. That's why. But because that they never made she, a movie of the second and I know, third part, I know which is disappointing. So in the books, she is much more of a central figure. She is the heroine of the series her dad is more of a secondary character that just kind of well yes gets her into it but because at the end of this movie she's clearly the, the powerful character yes she is the heroine and she, she can write really fast leader. i gotta say the l the, the 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 how she writes legibly on herself <laughs> see and, and my idea is that if if i wrote this well it would have been quite a different movie i uh, i'd be reading different books and magazines <laughs> <laughs> I'd I'd be reading uh, hockey magazines. I'd be reading Playboy magazines. I'd be reading all kinds of stuff. Cause stuff comes out of the books, and then oh no, something went in. Well, you know, if I'm with a bunch of people I don't like, like if I'm at work and I'm with a bunch of pricks, and not not my current job, my former job. If I'm at my former job and a bunch of you know chattering chatting Cathy's around me, 
and and you know miss june 1998 pops out of a magazine and one of those chatty kathy's disappears i'd be quite happy that'd be fantastic i'd have to explain how a naked girl showed up at work but, but that wouldn't be a fictional world oh yeah. me meeting a playmate is definitely a fictional world <laughs> That's that's as fictional as it gets. Really. <laughs> it would have been quite different if I wrote it. But I, I did tell her during this movie that if, if one of my books, if somebody was reading one of my books and I was transported into that book, don't bring me back. The weird part is this. So, okay. When they're reading the books... Okay, mm -hmm. and let's say you know she brings Toto out and whatever goes in. Mm -hmm. If you reread the book, is Toto gone now? I don't. They don't really explain that, but I don't think so. And when you're rereading the book, does whoever went into the book do they because, show up in what you're reading? See, it's never really specific because you don't know exactly what's going to come out or what's going to go in until the end of the movie. That's why the, the movie kind of irritates me because of how they did the ending. Because, you know, earlier you don't know exactly what's going to go come out. And at the end, everything happened exactly like she said. It wasn't just something and then came he out just, of the book. It was and he not only did that, but exactly then, what then she said. he reads the guy back into the book. And it's like, I can send you back. And it's like, but you can't, though. Right. The and way it was so explained the throughout the, the whole movie, movie is kind of irritating it's like it's this nice halfway dark and then they disney-fied the ending yes okay it's guys like, we gotta have the hollywood ending we need to end this movie in like I think, 10 minutes to me it feels like this movie when it was originally written that firestarter ends up going off on his own Dustfinger. firestarter Dustfinger. He, just, he just ends up going off on his own to lead a firestarter life and realizes he can't be read back into the book i think that's a more fulfilling ending and then it, it does leave it open for, for a sequel, which they never did. But it would be more fulfilling and it would show more character growth if he goes, okay, I'm going to go off on my own and I don't want to risk him losing his wife, so I'm going off on my own. And it would show that he has learned and he has grown as a man. Because he tells the author, who's the dumbest character in the history of movies, he does tell the author. He's he's dingy in the book too, though. It's funny. oh my god, he's so stupid. It's funny. It, he's it's just because he's so giddy. That like I said, all of his character. So he's if not thinking. if somebody read my book and my villain came out, okay, first off, I crap my pants because he's he's genocidal, and he eats people, and secondly, um, I'm I'm probably not going to be happy about it. And I'm certainly not going to say something rude to him when we're face to face. I will find some ass kissing way around it and try not to get my face eaten by this horrible. And if you were there, you would look at him and say, you, you created this. This is your creation. See, and actually in the books, that's what happens is like, what, how did you create such horrible people? Do you think like that? Is that how you're able to create characters like this? And of course, so they do actually go into that in the books. If it was run that somebody read, oh, it would be Roger. Knowing my luck, it'd, it'd be Roger. It wouldn't be Allison that would come out of the books. Wouldn't wouldn't be the hot, rebellious blonde. Nah, it would be Roger. It'd be the psychotic killer. Like, yeah, yeah, there's the six foot three, 260 pound psychopathic murderer. Couldn't read Allison out. No. Or even Sean, who's kind of a cool guy because he's based on me. <laughs> but he's taller and he's more handsome than I am. Because books. Oh, shit. So that's, that's what I like with the movie because it makes me go, you know what? How would I do this? How would I write this? How would. And it's different, and you know, and in, in my version, it wouldn't be some guy reading it, a Playboy. It, it, but there, there. Ironically, there'd be some Lord of the Rings in it, and there'd probably be some horror to it. So Resident Evil would be a good tie-in. Probably would be. 
Because if if it was me writing this, it would have been almost like a Goonies kind of thing, where it would have been teen, a teenage boy in that kind of a group that realizes he can do this. And then they go on weird adventures through all these book lands, and all these book lands are interacting with them. I think it could have been fun. But it doesn't work like that. If, if I wrote it, it would. But there'd be a consequence. So let's say you, you write yourself into... Um, sense and sensibility and then something horrible now happens in that story that didn't happen originally because you messed with it mm. that's how i would write it you know so instead of kate winslet being in the movie it'd be natalie portman and it would just suck because she'd have to do an accent <laughs> and in oh. instead of hugh grant it's danny devito as the romantic lead with Natalie Portman, and nobody watches it. Gilbert Godfrey. Oh my! I would watch that. <laughs> I would watch Gilbert Godfrey in a Jane Austen movie like that. I'm all over that. <laughs> that would be awesome. Just for the just for the eyes, and just yeah. for the, how Jewish he'd be. Could I be more regal? Can I take your daughter's hand? You know, and they're locking the door and setting everything on fire. Be just great. Oh, goodness. I think that'd be great. I think that's great. I want the Jane Austen movie with Gilbert Gottfried. I want that. That'd be awful. That'd be great. And Rosie O'Donnell could be the romantic lead with him. <sighs> yes. Oh, Rosie O'Donnell and Gilbert Gottfried oh. in Pride and Extremely Prejudiced. The Jews are coming. <laughs> it could be, you know, old fashioned England and she's gonna marry a Jew. It would be so much fun. It'd be that Jane Austen book that she wrote while she was on a bender. Oh my. Oh, she had to have gone on a bender at least once. <laughs> That'd be great. Oh. Well, okay, so, Inkheart, what would you give it on a scale of 1 to 10? 9. I'll, I'll go with an 8. Because it, it's cute. The, the end is stupid. It's cute, but yeah, the end kind of kills it. I know, it's annoying. Because it as soon really as there's an annoying end. It's like, you can't control what comes out and what goes in, and then, all no, right, you exactly can. it does exactly what you say. You can. Wait, so she could have written, so, it's like I said. Why doesn't he just make something up and make them all go away? Like, he says at that one part, I can say a few words and make you all dead. How? Well, I don't see that when... when Because he doesn't I have that. the book. But see, when I first watched the movie and he said that, it was one of those kind of like, they don't actually know what his power is. They don't know the full extent of it. Because all they saw of him is when he read them out of the book. They don't know exactly what he can do. Yeah, but it's the like dude with Harry the knife Potter, tries to stab him and it doesn't when, work. When Harry Potter is threatening to use his magic, well, they don't know that he actually can't. Same thing. He's threatening them with something that's not well, that, there, but they have no idea. That was before Harry got the ring and went to Mordor. Shannon, no. What? He used the Millennium no. Falcon and went way faster that way. He had Spock helping him. Oh, no. No, no. Yes. No. No. Yes. Don't you remember when he fought Wormtongue? Shh, shh, shh. Mm -mm. Yes. Wormtongue was Vader's no. master. Shannon. Remember Darth Vader? He was a little chihuahua. Yay, hi. What? Exactly. That's what they said when they saw him. It was an amazing scene. Oh, Shannon. I need people to get a Kickstarter going so I can make this movie. No. I think I could make the greatest nerd rage movie ever, no. where I could mix every movie like this kind of did, but no, make it in a rageful way. See, in the, in the book, they do it more. Like each well, because you have to have begins, the rights. Each chapter begins with quotes from other books, and you have and to have the rights to those books. It's kind of and fun. whoever did this movie was careful about how many copyrights they'd have to pay for. Even Toto would require a copyright. Dorothy probably would have cost mm. more money. So you would just bring in Toto. Well, I don't know. It depends on like how many years it's been. I just want Since somebody to explain to me how Alibaba is able to do this and turn fire from his hands. Well, this wasn't Alibaba. 
It was whoever. It's Fareed. It was from the Forty Thieves book. Yes. His dust finger but, caught him. See, I don't think he was Alibaba because copyright. Wasn't that part of the book? No, I'm just saying that the way the way this movie's done, that way they don't have to pay as much for a copyright. No, because they didn't use a main character. But that that book is not copyright anymore. It's too old. No, it's, it's not. Wait, yes, it is. It's from the '60s. Keith Richards wrote it. Shannon. Him and Jane Austen wrote it. When she wrote Pride and Extremely Prejudiced. Remember? No. That book is well past copyright dates. <laughs> I well don't, past. I don't... I'm going to have to look that up. It is. I have to look that up. It's way past. Well, then they should have used Alibaba. But that's not what they were trying to do with the story. They didn't want some, like, a prince for that part. They didn't want. Then they shouldn't have made him prince like, because he's very prince like. No, he's Arabian. The way his character, he's this heroic figure in the book, in this movie, then they should have pulled a heroic character out of the book. No. Because it doesn't work if he's a heroic. That wouldn't have worked for the rest of the stories, though. Yeah, but they didn't care about the rest of the stories when they made this movie. But they followed the book. Which is weird because the book's part of a trilogy. I know. But they they did follow it quite well till the end. Where like I said, that's... Like, well, we got to tie it all together somehow. It's it's nitpicky, but that's why for me it would get an eight. I liked it. I, I didn't give it a five. Like, you gave all the movies I like a five. Those weren't very good. You're rolling your eyes going, crap, crap, crap. They weren't very good. They were great. Rebar? In the kitchen. You need rebar in the kitchen. Have you seen no. how tough their burgers are? A, what are you going to pull them off a grill with? A spatula? And then a machete on the wall in the kitchen? We have a machete no. on our wall in the kitchen. Keeps the bugs out. own a machete. And if we did, then we need to it own would a machete. be out in the shed. Not That's in the where kitchen. Jason finds it. Jason finds it in the shed. You keep it in the house so Jason can't find it. Doesn't it doesn't make sense. The rebar... There were two places of rebar. There, it was a wooden building. Where did the rebar come from? Why was it in the kitchen? What holds that the wood it, together? Rebar. It, no. Game set match. No. And then he match. kept making out with people. Yeah. I don't. Because he's lonely and he's dead. Just, it was really weird. You'd be lonely if you were dead too. And I'm just saying, if Jason was in this movie. It wouldn't hurt it. It would have dealt with that whole castle pretty darn quick. Oh. <laughs> and then she just could have rode on her arm and everything's better. That's so weird. I don't know, that part's it's silly. so strange. It's, it's kind of silly. And it's funny because, you know, this sort of reminds me of Princess Bride. Mm-hmm. Sort of in a way, in its right. style. And yet Princess Bride doesn't have that problem at the ending. The ending is warm and wonderful and sweet. And it all works. It all meanders through in some parts, but it all comes up to this perfect ending. And this one could have two. It's just close. Because the I understand they follow the books, but in this instance, you're better off to come up with an ending that kind of ties things together if you know you're not doing parts two and three. Mm-hmm. So maybe the movie, well, that's what they maybe the movie studio to, figured, right? well, we'll do two and three. But if you want to do a trilogy, no. you can't have Brendan Fraser as the main character. I was going to say, they weren't going to do two and three, otherwise they wouldn't have ended it like that. And they wouldn't have had Brendan Fraser as the main character. He can't carry a sequel. He can't. He's, he's, not, he's not box office gold. He's, he's an entertaining actor on his own, but he's Brendan Fraser. He can't be anybody else. He's like Keanu Reeves with acting skills. But he's still Brendan Fraser all the time. Like Keanu Reeves, no matter what he's doing, is still Keanu Reeves. Mm -hmm. He's a wooden stick. That every now and then says, whoa. Uh, And he screams incoherently and he sucks. That's Keanu Reeves. And if you watch The Lake House, don't. Because you'll want to kill yourself. I don't know that I've ever heard of it. 
it's really dumb it's this idea that there's this there's this mailbox that travels through time so if, if you and i were in 10 different 10 years apart from each other you'd put a letter in the box and 10 years later i get the letter and then i put a letter back to you and you get it 10 years before neither of them figure out to give each other a phone number or an email address or anything because they're only 10 years apart or whatever it was five years 10 years whatever it was or a well it's this date i'm here come find me nah it's ridiculously stupid all right this was much better than that we should watch the lake house i should so that you can feel my pain i'd rather not because as soon as <laughs> funny thing was my ex thought she liked it until about half an hour in when i said why doesn't he just give her his phone number and she's like oh, you're right damn it <laughs> the rest of the movie gone that was it it was the stupidest movie ever it's like why are they sending these romantic letters through time to each other just give give him your phone number you want to jump his bones give him your phone number and then just for dramatic they they make you think one of them's gonna die but they don't so they can be in love and it's like this is stupid this took way too long all right Inkhart did not do that no all right so there's the first movie that she got me to watch that i hadn't watched uh we will be watching probably some christmas <sighs> movies together she's thrilled about yeah we have lots of christmas movies yeah, yeah, you do. I think she's got all of them. I don't. I really don't. You have Christmas with the Cranks. Yes, that one's funny. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys stop laughing out there. All right. Did I not make you watch it last year? Uh, yes, parts of it. I watched parts of it. I know, there was a few movies that you didn't actually watch. Yeah, now I have to, because I made her sit through all those horror movies. I have to sit through because I love you. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon.